Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ministry of Agriculture, Land and uh, Fisheries. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just waiting to... Okay, I think we're ready. Let's dive in there. Good afternoon. So can you hear me? Hi, good afternoon. Yes. Hi, good, good afternoon. Day. How is uh, things in your side of the forest? Are you think forest because it's ministry, right? No. <laughs> Agriculture. <laughs> No okay, so, uh, so uh, everything is good for you, right? Yes, for now. Okay, so I'm Tony D on the inside, and okay. um, you are R Rishi? Yes, I am. Rishi Mohan Singh. All right. Got it. Great, thanks. Nice. So uh, Rishi is from uh, the Ministry, like I said, of, of Agriculture, uh, Land and Fisheries. And, of course, um, He's here to give some rather, 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 and I'm stressing on it, important information. Yeah, about a particular kind of, um, should I call it a pest? Yes, it is, a pest. Right. Um, this particular pest, man, man, from what I'm reading in my hands, you have, whoa, wow, 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 wow. Wow. And I, and, and I must be the first one to admit I had no idea it existed. Well, in Trinidad, we didn't have it until just a few months ago. So oh. it's new to most people. That's why we are doing a session such as this. Okay, okay. Well, you dive in and then I will dive in after you. Yeah? Right. Okay. So with a little introduction, yeah, basically we have a new pest in our country. It's called Tuta absoluta, commonly called tomato leaf miner. Now this pest, it's a very tiny pest. You could say small like a mosquito. Mm. It comes out at night and feeds, and the bad thing is, it feeds on the fruits mainly, as well as on your plants. Now, the crops that they feed on are tomato, peppers, and melon gin. Now, those are high-priced crops in the country, and if you have a pest like that damaging it, that could cause a number of issues. Now, the losses you can get is between 80 to 100% losses. Wow. So, that's... Yeah, that's a big issue for the farming population and even home gardeners who actually have, let's say, a few tomato plants behind their house. Mm -hmm. You could run the risk of losing your entire crop. Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so let, let, let me dive in to, 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 to pick your brain a little bit some questions on the inside, okay? Um, oh, okay. So you have just uh, actually uh, described this particular pest uh, uh, to us, right? It's new to Trinidad and Tobago, um, as you says. So a lot of people will not um, know it at all or will not be able to... Well, I'll dive into that afterward. Let's dive into the, what... Okay, we deal with the, what crops um, specific, specifically um, target tomatoes only? Tomato is, is what we refer to as the main host. So mm -hmm. they like tomato, mm -hmm. but they will also affect peppers mm -hmm. and melon gin. Those are the main crops. So why, why, why choose the food that I like? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to ask the best that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, question, what is, uh, well, of, of course you say it looks like a, um, like a mosquito. Well, it's tiny like a mosquito in terms of if someone wants to picture the size. Mm -hmm. So we're not asking people to go and look for it. Okay. Right? But just so that you have a picture of what it is, but it could cause a lot of damage. Yeah, for a small insect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the thing with insects is they don't come one and two. They come by the thousands, mm -hmm. which is the issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is a big issue. A, right. a major issue. Okay, so... um distinctively why is it such a problem though right now the thing is like we said because they affect the most economical part of your plant which is the fruits mm -hmm. right they make what we call bore holes in the fruit and then you get what you call secondary infection coming in and you lose the entire fruit mm -hmm. so that is why it is a major problem now like i said before it also affects the stems of your plant and whether it's seedling stage whether it is a growing plant whether it's a mature plant but mainly it affects the economical part, which is the fruits. Okay. Um, you spoke about in terms of, um, um, oh yeah, because you did that, law says when you talk about 80 to yes. 100% in terms, so that means it, it, it's a total wipeout then? Correct, correct. If it is not managed. Now, the thing is, we are on this program, so I don't want people to get pan to panic. Mm -hmm. It is not widely distributed in the country. It is in, a, in certain areas, so... We are trying to manage it so that it doesn't spread and cause this economic loss that we are talking about. 
uh, are there specific areas right now um, in Trinidad and Tobago that you could actually identify as to where, where they might be more prevalent than others? Yes. Now, part of what we do, we do what we call surveillance activity in our country, where we have traps set up throughout the country. People may not know about that, and where we will be able to pick up pests. So when we, when we set up our traps, we usually do it routinely. It was picked up in the St. George East, St. George West, and the Carony counties. Mm. So we can say the East-West Corridor, which is the major food basket for the country, mm. and it has also started going into the Carony um, county. Wow. Well, when, when are we sure you know what's happening to us, right? So we got to put a, a stop to that question. Um, how long um, does this particular pest live? What right. So the, age? Right. So usually the, um, the literature will tell you about a range of 29 to 38 days. But with our conditions, and this happens with pests, when the conditions are very hot, the life cycle is faster. So we are using an average of 30 days, an entire life cycle of this pest will take place. 30 days. Yes, so that tells you in one year the amount of pests you will have and the extent of damage you could have mm -hmm. if it's not. Mm -hmm. What symptoms can uh, be seen? Well, because through the plant, I'm talking about it's just the leaves and, and, and the stems. Is that all that we, um, if we're looking at it with, with uh, the naked eye, that is? Right. right, so like I said, because of how tiny the pests is, and mm -hmm. it's referred to as nocturnal, so they feed at night. So no one is asking anyone to go out and look for them, right? So on your plant, a plant, those three plants we talk about, tomato, peppers, melanchin, they are green plants. Mm -hmm. So you will see on your plant something referred to as a blotch. Now, what is a blotch? Basically, it's an irregular spot on the leaves of your plant. Mm -hmm. And it's usually transparent, so it will look white to almost clear. And over time, it turns brown. Mm. So if we want to picture it in our mind, it's like if you take ink and you pour it on a piece of paper, how it would spread an uneven type of pattern. Mm -hmm. That is what you will see on the leaves. It will look clear to white and then it turns brown. So those are the symptoms you will see on your leaves. So that is easy to pick up in your field. If you just go and look at your plants, you'll be able to see those things. You can't really see what is inside the stems of your plant, so you wouldn't look for that. But the fruits... Under the sepal area, the sepal area is the little leaves attached to the fruit. You will see holes. And in those holes, you will also see what we call ex excrement, which is the droppings of the pests. Mm -hmm. So those are the classical signs you will look for. You will look for holes in your fruit, and you will also look for that blotch type appearance on your leaves. Even if you're buying, let's say you're buying tomato in the markets, you will want to also look mm -hmm. for those holes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, because you could be very well be taking that um, home with you. Right. Now, the good thing so far, because we've been continuing our survey, we are not picking up the symptoms on our fruits or on our plants as yet. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that is a good thing. That means the pest maybe is not properly established in the country as yet. But we are picking it up in our traps. So the adults are here, but we are not seeing it uh, manifesting in our plants as yet, which is a good thing. So uh, we, that's the, what that's... Does that mean reproduction uh, have not started, again, started to in, in a humongous way yet, a large way yet? Correct. It means that the, the population is very small and it has not started getting into the plant and causing the damage like what is supposed to be to it. Mm -hmm. so, so that we are, we are plus, uh, there's a plus on our side if you want to say that. All right. That will lead me to the next question. Destroy. Right. How do we get rid of? Right. So now the thing is, we have the pests, and what we are telling people, the first thing you need to look out. Go into your field, look for the pests, whether you look for the symptoms, sorry. Whether you have two plants behind your house or you have a thousand plants in your, in your, your field, right? And if you do pick it up, we have management strategies that you do, what we call an IPM approach, an integrated pest management approach, which includes your cultural measures, and I'll just mention a few just now. You will also be setting up traps to catch these pests, and you will also use chemicals. So these are three methods on how to actually get rid of this pest in your field. So when we talk about cultural measures, it's basic things that we will do in the field. We will control weeds. If we see a plant is looking unhealthy, let's say you're seeing symptoms on your plant, 
you will cut it down and you will try to burn it a little way from the field. You're not removing it from the field. If you see fruits are being, uh, if you're again dropping off fruits and you look at the fruits, you may see holes in it and things like that. You want to pick it up and burn them. Because if you leave your fruits on the ground there, the life cycle will continue. Because now it's an insect, a moth, and it, will, it has four stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. So it lays the eggs on the plant. The egg will hatch into what we call a larva, or people refer to it as a worm or a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And this worm will bore a hole and get into the fruit. So if the fruit falls to the ground, the cycle will continue in the fruit. So you have to pick it up and things like that. So that is why we talk about cultural measures, which is simple things to do. When we talk about trapping, mm -hmm. now we are in the process of actually getting traps into our country. So because we didn't have the pest before, so it wouldn't, we wouldn't need to have these traps. But now, it, very soon, it will be available in the um, agro shops where you can actually set up traps. And in these traps, you have something called a pheromone. It's the female scent of this insect. And what happens is you put that in your trap. It operates like a fly trap where when you put that scent, the males would be attracted to that scent and they come to the trap and they stick on a sticky pad and they die. So that is an indirect way of not using, well, we are not using chemicals in that way. So for those who don't want to use chemicals and things like that, you have an approach you can do. But for now, we recommend a quick knockdown and it doesn't matter what pest it is or which country it is. When a pest comes into our country, the first thing you want to do is try to do a quick knockdown. And a quick knockdown means you have to use chemicals. Now, farmers do use chemicals. We are not telling them to use anything out of the ordinary. There are a list of chemicals that are recommended. And all this information that we are talking about today is on our ministry's website. So for others who maybe if it's too much information for now, you can get this information on our website as well at agriculture.gov.tt. In terms of the of the the the, the pads, um, right? Okay, uh, one of first. Let me ask you, um, what's the name of the pads and how often, how often should these pads be um, replaced? Right. So it's it's referred to as a Jackson trap. That is what is made up of, and it has a sticker, which is basically is a piece of cardboard with a sticky substance on it. Right, so that is inserted in the trap, and usually it is changed every two weeks. So you set up this trap. So in your field, you will hang this trap about two feet from the ground. You could hang it on your plant, or you could hang it on a stake in the field. And in there, you will have your pheromone, like I said before. And when the, when the pest comes on it, they will stick on the sticky pad. So every two weeks, you remove just the sticky pad, and you put back a new one. The pheromone is active for six weeks. Mm -hmm. So after six weeks, you will mm -hmm. add a new pheromone. Mm -hmm. And how, um, <clears throat> excuse me, how many traps are actually recommended in the field? Right, so if it is, we're talking about hectares, which is large, large um, amounts of um, production, it was recommended you use 40 to 50 traps in that area. If it is acres, which is Trinidad, we have more farmers who do acres, you'll use about 16 to 20. Mm -hmm. If it is, let's say you have a backyard garden, you just have a, a few hundred plants, one trap is good enough. Just one? Yeah, yeah, that is. And that, that will do, uh, it will attract a lot of pests depending on your population. Okay, are there a uh, straight location where these traps are, being, are supposed to be placed? Right. So if it is, let's say, the more, now the thing is, the more plants you have, ideally is more food, so it is hoped that you will have more, more pests, right? Mm -hmm. So that is why you use more traps. So what you will try to do is evenly distribute the traps in your field, beginning mm -hmm. of the field, in the middle of the field, and also in the ends of your field, because they could come in from anywhere. Okay, let's talk about chemicals. Okay. What sort of chemicals uh, would you recommend uh, in terms of management? Right. So now with chemicals, you have different types of chemicals, right? So for example, like I say, all this is on the ministry's website, chemicals with the active ingredient, abamectin, it's recommended to control tuta absoluta. 
you have what is called as a directing, which is the name line of products, which we they refer to as the organic type products. And you also have biological type products, something called Bacillus thuringiensis. That's the active ingredient, which is a bacteria in a bottle where you can apply to your plants and they will also control this pest. So you have different, you don't only have, we are not only recommending the synthetic type chemicals, you have other types that you can incorporate in your rotation. Now, the thing is, when you're using a chemical, we always recommend that you have to rotate it with another mm -hmm. because you do not want your pest to develop resistance to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all that information, like I said, is on, we have fact sheets out on our ministry's website. Mm -hmm. um, noticeable, what is a noticeable pest? Notifiable, notifiable pest. pest sorry. Yes. Now, when a pest comes into a country because we don't have it, by law, they, they, it, we say it's a notifiable, we make it a notifiable pest or notifiable status. So that means with that you have actions that you have to take that has to be taken so let's say you pick up this pest in your field by law it is notifiable meaning you have to report it to the your closest agricultural office mm -hmm. right the reason for that is because we need to map this out to know how much pest there is where the pest is how it is moving and things like that so that is why it is it gets the status of notifiable now, the thing with it as well, notifiable status, there's also a fine attached to it of $5,000 if you have it and you do not report it and you are found to have it. So I don't want people to get scared and say, okay, well, I have this pest, I'm not going to report it because they will charge me. That is not how it works. If you have it, you report it. You, you are not going to get charged. However, if you just have it in your field and you're not doing anything about it and you're just letting it multiply in your field mm -hmm. and, you are, and someone picks up that you have it, then you could be charged. So there's a difference, right? So I don't want anybody to get scared and think, well, you know, we're going to charge you or anything like that. But it is a, it's a way of actually managing this pest by, like I say, actually mapping it out, how it is, where it is, and things like that. Wow. Well, anyway, I like the charge party. I'll come. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we 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 are people. Uh, uh, basically, we like a little trend every now and then to make us. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, do the like right thing. Say, we don't even want to reach that <laughs> that that stage. But yeah, it is yeah. the law. And I never knew that, though. Right. Yeah, I never knew that. Yeah, and that is not only trend that eh? those notifiable pest status is something that is done in the world. Once a new pest comes into our country. Mm -hmm do that what we call notifiable status okay so who or whom Sorry. do i contact right so the first thing is like we have set up a, a email address where people can take out photos and send it to us and the email address is ces entomology at gmail.com you can send photos to us and we can identify whether you have the pest or not or you can contact any of your agricultural offices, your county agricultural offices. So wherever you live, within that county, there is an agricultural office. You contact them via phone or you can go into them and you tell them you have this issue. They will come out and see whether you have it or not. Mm -hmm. You can even take a sample to them and they will be able to identify whether you have the pest or not. Is, is it likely, um, um, or should I, let, let me rephrase that to you. How... Yes often how often um do we have situations like that um happening here in trinidad and tobago or maybe probably let's let's speak worldwide because this is a global thing right we're speaking how but in trinidad and tobago how often do we have things like that happening right now that is the thing for the past maybe few years or so it's becoming very regular mm. where we are getting new pests and when we talk about pests we talk about pests and diseases mm -hmm, eh? mm -hmm, broad mm -hmm. term it refers to as pests so, like a few years ago, we were talking about HLB, which is um, citrus greening, where it was affecting our citrus um, commodity, uh, fruits and things like that. Not, we had a, a few years back sweet potato weevil. We have giant African snail, which is mm -hmm. still an issue right now. And now we have this tutor absoluta. So it's something. Now, the thing is, as trade takes place, as people move, even the pest itself, they move with commodities and things like that. So you have things happening. 
right? But the thing is, when it comes into a country, there are things that we have that are in place that we talk about what a quick action, which is exactly what we are doing now. Mm -hmm. There is a plan, and in and even in the Caribbean too, there's a Caribbean plan and there's a country plan. So we are in the process of doing both. So that when we get this pest, whatever it is in our country, we deal with it immediately before it spreads or even multiplies further. That's a lot of information for us. Um, can you give us, okay, uh, um, the website again where uh, uh, the farmers, uh, the, 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 the home gardener and anybody could, could, could go for these information? Right. So it's the ministry's website, agriculture dot gov dot tt you just go on the website and you will see those um, on our home page you will see the fact sheets on tutor absoluta so like i said we are telling people look out for it go in your garden look out for the symptoms and if you pick up some of the symptoms nothing wrong you might be wrong and maybe it's not the symptoms but still we would like to get contacts from you get your pictures so that we can confirm it is not that yeah, we, 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 we will rather um, prefer to get a call and come and it's not that than for you not to call and it is that. Correct, correct, yes. You know? So, okay, Mr. Rishi Mohan Singh, any additional uh, information for us? Well, for now, like we say, it is not widely um, distributed in our country, so we could actually bring this pest under control. Like we always say, it has, it has to be a team effort, mm -hmm. right? We will not know what is going on in your field or your home garden, your kitchen garden, unless you bring it to our attention. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. All our officers are trained, so we are ready to should these queries come in and things like that, where we can do visits, so like I say, assess pictures and things like that. So we are here to assist you. It is not that you are doing it on your own, and we are here to give you advice as well. Okay. So we ask you, we need your help as well. Uh, Mr. Richie, let, um, let, 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 let's take a call. I think we have someone on the line, okay? Oh, no problem. Waka Radio, good afternoon. You're live. Good afternoon for the love of my country. Mm -hmm. I saw that same thing when I was speaking about. Mm -hmm. A foreign country. It damaged the tomatoes and they set up a trap. Mm -hmm. But this stuff, they're using soap water. It's a fine black thing. It damaging the, the stem and the fruit. It, it getting so 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 the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Last night I saw that on the television, and they using soap water. One of them Chinese countries, Indonesia or one of those countries. It was on the television last night. Mm -hmm. Okay. They using soap water mm -hmm. in a wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Put the around the fields and it going in it. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, you want to respond? Okay, well, now, like we say, it's new. These are the things we want to, what I spoke about, that we want to bring the population down. So I'm sure there are other methods which in time we may incorporate in our program. Mm -hmm. But for now, we want to get a quick knockdown. So that is why we spoke about our chemical approach, mm -hmm. our cultural measures, and our trapping. But yes, there are, I'm sure there are others that could be yeah. incorporated later on. Okay, so uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mohan Singh, for uh, that bit of information and uh, um, spreading um, that, what should I say, that alert. So now, now that we, um, you have alerted us to that, our eyes are supposed to be opened and looking at our little crops to see if there's anything of that nature. And of course, you said we can contact any one of the ministries um, located in our, um, in our area? Yes, in our, our county. In our county. And on our ministry's website, if you need to get the contacts, there is contacts on the ministry's website that you can get. So it's not that you're just looking all over the place. All right. So great. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, 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 educating us today. And uh, well, hopefully you, um, you're going to be doing it again as sure. things think progress. Uh, Thank you for accommodating us, and thanks to your listening audience as well. Yes, man, that's not a problem. You have a beautiful one today. Thank you so much. You too. Yeah, Take man. care. Yeah, man. Take. Bye-bye. Yeah.